Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO Retrospective Podcast, where we talk about all things 3DO, the company, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Threk. How are you doing, Threk? I'm doing just great, Bill. How are you doing? Getting into the spooky season? I'm definitely into the spooky season, that's for sure. All right. Um, and uh, in case anyone on video noticed, we actually have a guest for this episode. I got my longtime uh, buddy. I think we've known each other since 2019 now going on it but um it's my buddy schnickerman how's it going man hey first time on the 3do experience long time guest on the the network well the gnc podcasts um family i suppose it's good to be back it's good to be talking about uh other things for once yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you you've been around since like the original 3do gnc episode like way back in like 2021 i think that was yeah i mean i think i've been there since the beginning of that so yes nice it doesn't feel like 2021 was that long ago no no it really doesn't like but it's weird 2021 doesn't feel like it was that long ago but 2020 feels like it was an eternity ago <laughs> weirdly yeah Ugh, man um yeah it's been uh it's been a weird week for gaming recently yeah, before before we get into that, I have to do something. So, uh, earlier today, I was talking to Chris from, from a Nava console. He, he better be listening. He said he would. Um, we were just chatting about stuff, and I had mentioned to him that I have never beaten his favorite game of all time, which is Star Fox 64. And, and he said, you need to fucking play and beat that game. And I said, I'll do it, and then I'll talk about it on the pod for you. So I did. I beat it like 20 minutes before we started recording. <laughs> So, and I, so Chris, your little mini review, of Star Fox sixty four. I really liked it. it. It was it was super fun, super quick. Um, I think I died like maybe I died once at like the Boise Defense Station, and then once fighting Andros. Um, but 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 I liked it. I think I prefer Panzer's Dragoon, but it was a, a fantastic game. So I did it, Chris. Dad, fuck you. I love you. <laughs> Golf clap. Thank you. Thank you. Uh man, I haven't played Star Fox 64 in probably like two years. Now that I think about it. Yeah, but prior to this, I had played it like twice. I had like multiplayered it at a friend's house, like in high school, and then I played it when it dropped into NSO, like a couple years ago. And then that was kind of it. But yeah, I said I said I had to do that. So, anyways, yeah, video game news. What's going on? Um, Sony just killed off the Concord developer. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw that. Not to the, not to the a shock surprise. of no one. Shocking. Yeah, yeah. They they could have kept Japan Studio alive, but no. I mean, I saw they, many uh, a fry gif or the uh, the top gear gif <laughs> when that got announced. So yeah, yeah. Because I thought I had heard that like they killed Japan Studio, so Firewalk could exist, and now Firewalk doesn't even exist anymore. So what's the point? Yeah, Japan got like restructured into Sobi, I think it is, or the uh, the. Yeah, I, I I am I imagine that's what happened. Hopefully, so it's Sobe water that hasn't been around in ages. <laughs> I still see it occasionally. <laughs> Loved Sobe back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, uh, uh, the uh, Dragon Age Veilguard the reviews came mm -hmm. out and it's not completely terrible. Good news. So yeah, I haven't played a single Dragon Age. So cool. I played the first one. That's it. But that's really the only one people seem to care about. So it's very some, good. So, yeah. yeah, some people are really strongly behind Inquisition, from what I've read. But like the one that most people cared cared about was the first one. Yeah, yeah but but worst. but with that coming out, the uh, the the I guess the director of Veilguard, who's also the franchise director of Mass Effect, uh, made yeah. some comments about Mass Effect, saying that like you know they're working on it. Um, they said it. They said it's going to be like photorealistic as long as, as I'm running it, um, and that it's going to retain the mature tone of the original trilogy. So, you know, not not much at all really to, to go yeah. off of. But it was nice to hear that somebody asked them about Mass Effect and they actually answered. That, That's like know, my the, favorite. That they're response. working on it. That's like my favorite response from like any developer when asked about something. It's like we're working on it. It's like sure. good, good to know. I mean, they announced it back in like 2020. So, and my guess is we uh, will be lucky if we see that game in the next like five years. I would say. 
But but with Mass Effect, I'd prefer if they took their time. They don't need to rush it. You know? Yeah. I, I want them to get it right. So I, I do not mind waiting. Um, uh, apparently, there's um, like previews are starting to go out for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which is a game I'm looking forward to, especially on Game Pass. And people seem to really, really enjoy it. So I think Machine Games... They 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 make great games about beating up Nazis. So I'm glad to see the tradition still continues. Um, nice. And then and then probably the other one is probably the one you wanted to talk about, which is uh, Xenoblade X is finally announced for Switch, which one is less, something one less which, reason to own a Wii U. <laughs> I, I feel like we all knew this was going to happen eventually. It was it was a matter of when, not if, because like all the other Xenoblades are on Switch, so you might as well throw a chronicles x on there this is the one that's the mech right it's like it's it's it, like a in weird, the same universe but it's like a side game it's like a weird mech almost mmo kind of game but mm-hmm. not really an mmo it's it's cool it was really interesting when it came out i'm sure a lot of people are finally gonna get to play it this time so yeah so yeah so i don't yeah i'm trying to think what else is left on the wii u there's the the two zelda ports Star Fox um, Zero. Star Fox Zero, Yoshi's Woolly World, um, Devil's Third, just because the idea of that being <laughs> ported would be amazing. Um I'm trying to think Paper what Mario. else. Paper Mario. Yeah, Color Splash. Yeah, I could see that one. Um because hmm. everything else, it's like eh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, maybe, but that's that's like a long shot. Um it's like what, like maybe five games at this point? that matter like i don't think anybody really is looking for like tank 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 or stuff like that no no like it, it and like i like nintendo land but i think i don't know how you would do that game without the gamepad mm-hmm. you know that's that's part of the appeal of that one so didn't uh, it, and i think zombie you got ported to like everything else it did it did and it's like the wii u version is the best version because it was kind of made for that but it, it's not a very good game yeah I, I love the fact that the the re-release was like just called Zombie because they couldn't use the U, and it's like the most generic <laughs> title for a video game ever. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's whatever has like some like roguelike elements to it. It it feels like there's an interesting idea there for a game, but it's like you're just playing sort of like a beta of like a, a complete game, you know, like it's not fully realized yet. I'm so. convinced it was like Nintendo was like, we need something dark and edgy for this thing's launch. Ubisoft, please. And Ubisoft's like, who's not busy? The Rayman <laughs> team? You guys do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, RIP to them. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that too. Yeah, though, so. apparently, uh, though apparently with, yeah, because uh, they, they uh, closed. I don't think they, did they? They shut that team down because that was like a separate team within Ubisoft. Was it Montpelier? Yeah, because because I because I, I swear Montpelier is still around because they're they're making Beyond Good and Evil two supposedly. Yeah, yeah, it, I think it was yeah they had pitched the Prince of Persia Lost Crown two or whatever, and they went no. Um, and then apparently shortly after that, Ubisoft's like, oh, we're looking into Rayman, and it's like, okay, okay, I don't know what the hell that means, but you know, it's gonna like, be really hard without uh, Michelle and Cell around because he, even though he's kind of a creep from what I've heard, um he was kind of the brainchild of that series. Yeah. So I, I mean, if, if, if for some reason that's the spark for them to make a Rayman legends too, like, okay, sweet. But yeah, it's a great game, but I, I, I don't know. Again, I just don't think Ubisoft knows what the hell they're doing. No, I mean, I'm in the minority that would kind of, like, I kind of want more of like a Rayman four, like another 3d game, but I'm fine with that. Like, I, I think Rayman is something they should do more of. I feel like, Every time they've had Rayman, they kind of missed the boat on him being like a stable, like mascot for that uh, that company, and sort of, you know, maintaining their presence with that. You know, like in the in the original run of Rayman, it kind of like m- morphed itself into the Rabbids, which I don't really yeah. think anybody liked. Um, uh, and Rabbids that, Go Home was a pretty game. cool was a cool game, but that was yeah, the one but, where you just make a pile of shit. Basically. Yeah, but like, yeah, but the one, but like having to kill Rayman for that felt like unnecessary well especially because rayman 4 apparently was supposed to be like a, a, a platformer like three and the villains were supposed to be the rabbits and then they just kind of gave up and made a party game instead yeah yeah 
Ugh. But um, and then they did Rayman Origins and Legends, which were like fantastic 2D platformers, still fantastic 2D platformers. That's I don't know, maybe we were thinking it would be more of a series, but I don't know, maybe with Legends, they're like, we really can't top this right now. So they were like the start of like what I consider like the final, like the great era of 2D platformers where they finally realized we don't need lives for these games to be fun. So let's just get rid of that and make it like we can make it hard, but not like annoy people. Yeah, yeah. The the challenge comes from like replaying the stage to get all like the collectibles or something if yeah. you care about that. You know, they, they know how to play to like the casual and the purist at the same time. Yeah, because I know like Rayman One is is still like probably one of like the most like beautiful, like ambitious platformers ever made. But it's so fucking difficult and the lives just make it like not fun to play after a while. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Do you have any thoughts on Rayman, Schnickerman? I, I like the new Rayman games. Um, I like the original Rayman game. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to get another Rayman game that's similar to the original, perhaps. I thought the newer ones were good. But I think also to to Bill's point of the way that platformers are different, I've been playing some Crash uh, Insane Trilogy. And yes. uh, that game, Crash is pretty hard, and I'm pretty bad at games. So <laughs> It's the Dark Souls of platforms. I still Seriously, can't believe it's really hard. No. Don't, you, can't fuck, that don't you fucking dare say mm -hmm. that shit. That was an actual article. Some like journalist actually said that. And I'm always I've nervous. played I've played harder platformers than Crash. No, it's, there's definitely harder, but see, Crash One is hard because it's kind of jank. Like, let's be yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. And really with those games, if you're not trying to hundred percent them, you'll be okay. Like hundred percenting them is the nightmare. Well, there's no that real I don't reason, recommend. Though. There's no real reason to 100% crash one. Uh, you get like a yeah, bonus really. ending that's not that's not canon anyways. Yeah, it's just to make yourself feel good. Kind of <laughs> yeah, thing. crash two and three aren't so bad, and uh, you actually do get like e like explanations for like the next games. Yeah, that helps. But speaking of platformers, um, th mm. this one I saw because uh, <laughs> funny at work I um. Like I just have like video games chronicle, like like just kind of bookmarked. So every once in a while I'll click it just to see if something's going on. And I saw one thing from them. It was it was about Yuka Replayly. So if you so for those yeah. who don't know, their ukulele, you know, came out quite a few years ago and they're doing like a big remaster for it. The game's not even really that old, but it is a game that probably could from what I know of it could use like some like adjusted controls and all that kind of Quality stuff. Of life, yeah. Yeah, quality of life improvements. And and they originally announced it for, for PC, you know, and everyone's like, well, that's weird. And I'm like, eh, it'll come to consoles, of course. Like, why not, right? Well, they did another trailer for it, confirming that it was coming to, uh, to two consoles, but they listed them as PlayStation, Xbox, you know, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and just Nintendo. But, so it might be the first, like, half-confirmed Switch 2 title. You know, I, I'm sure there are other. Well, if I remember Dragon Quest 12, somebody asked Yuji Hori if they were making that for the next switch. And they said yes. Excellent. So so it is like slowly starting to trickle that like, uh, you know, like games for the switch Two that are in the works. Do I you don't guys think... remember when um when uh, Dragon Quest 11 got announced and they specifically had Nintendo NX in the trailer. NX, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I think SMT5 also had the the NX in there as well. So. But this one, yeah, they're not doing like NX2 or anything crazy like that. I don't think Yuka Replaylee will be there at the launch. I mean, it depends on when it launches itself. But I've not played Ukulele, but I think I'll I'll, I'll wait on Replaylee. That'll probably be the way to play it. Hopefully. Yep. So, um, but yeah, so I found that to be interesting. And also, um, uh, Yakuza Kiwami came out on Switch finally, and uh, is selling like crazy according to uh, RGG. Who would have thought? Who would have thought a popular series on a popular console is going to sell really well? Who the hell would have thought that? Um, and it's apparently not super neutered, like, um, compared nope. to a lot of Switch ports. Yeah, it, and funny, I think it was, uh, was, was Burger was like, oh, I can't believe they, they priced it at like 20 bucks or whatever. And it's like, well, it's priced 20 bucks pretty much everywhere. So they didn't put the Nintendo tax on it. True. So, nice. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. From what I hear, it's it's a pretty uh, solid port of the game, um, and yeah, people seem to be really liking it. And it's and it, once again, y Yakuza just keeps ascending higher and higher every year. So so good it's for really, that. 
it's really funny when you think about like out of all these companies like that lately a lot of companies just haven't been doing particularly well in gaming lately but sega seems to be like one of the healthiest companies in gaming at the moment which is crazy oh, yes. year is it <laughs> um the 90s <laughs> maybe well maybe. speaking of sega doing really well i i do have this boy. oh right um, I, I've played and beaten the the Shadow Generations. I did that over the weekend, and it is very, very good. Like, Ooh. it's honestly one of the best 3D Sonic games. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, it's was... only like five and a half hours. Oh man! But it is a very solid oh. five and a half hours. It's, al- it's almost as long as Sonic Forces. It's a little longer, but <laughs> oh. it's it's yeah. <laughs> but it's much better. Um, yeah, so it, it just has the, the really fantastic level design of Sonic Generations. And it does the same thing as Generations, where it takes notable shadow sections from other older Sonic games and does the levels with them. And they're all really well done. And then it has an overworld that's basically just Sonic Frontiers. Oh, you nice. know, kind of the, the open world stuff. But I can definitely tell it controls better. It looks better. Um, there's like more fun collectible stuff to do on the side. Um, the story, again, who would have thought hiring a guy who cared about the Sonic lore in the comics to write the Sonic lore in the games would actually help? Because they got Ian Flynn to write this one again. Um, From what and, I heard, and, like comparing it night and day, like the Ian Flynn stuff to the stuff that because I know like the original game was done by the Happy Tree Friends guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> very, yeah. So very big difference. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's handled really well, and I really enjoyed it. And the Generations remaster on here is also really good. So, nice. yeah, it was weird because at first I wasn't sure about it because it was like, well, I already have Generations on the 360, which is backwards compatible on the series and plays at like 120 frames. So it was like, what do I need this for? But then I saw they were doing more and more with the, the Shadow Generations to the point of like a Bowser's Fury. Like this is basically 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And just like that product, it is fantastic. And I would say is a must buy. It's only 50 bucks. So for that, you can't go wrong. So yeah, Sega's crushing it, man. They're crushing it. Speaking of, Bill, have you been playing Metaphor? I am still broke. So I cannot afford <laughs> God damn it. Metaphor. I just found a mouse in my house. So like I'm already Oh like, no. That's that's even more like money that I don't have. So what you do is you sell you 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 kill that mouse, you sell him, and then that money you use to buy metaphor. I don't think it's gonna buy a dead that. mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's a piece of modern art. You it just is. Have to free, you have to freeze it at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, that, that was all the new stuff that I saw. I mean, there was that Nintendo Switch online play test. Obviously, it got leaked. Shocker, right? It got leaked. And it was like Everybody's some weird, leaked. like mmo world building thing i saw some screenshots from it um i don't think it's ever a product that will be released to the general public like from what i saw it just looked like a weird test thing but it's it it's kind of neat we'll see what they do with it when the when the switch 2 eventually gets announced like i saw something i think it was yesterday that was like oh this might be the week they announce it i'm like ah shut up (laughs) i don't i don't i don't buy it they're trying to get clicks i think I guarantee you, Nintendo's gonna fucking shadow drop that thing on us, <laughs> and it's just gonna be like out of nowhere. I-, I could see them, like, say maybe the day before, posting on like Twitter or something, like, "Hey, we're gonna we're we're gonna talk about the the future of like Nintendo hardware on this <laughs> like date at this time." You you know how they are, the vague shit, you know, and we and we all know what it'll be. Um, they'll probably give us a twenty four hour notice, and then that'll be that. You know what's kind of crazy. Because of how Nintendo fans are, Nintendo could totally do like a Sega Saturn thing and just be like, oh, it's out now. And people would probably buy it anyways. I would not. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Nintendo fans are just no. crazy enough that they might actually do it. I don't I, I think that would be a bad idea. I'm not saying much, much like when I'm the Saturn, saying. much like when the Saturn did it. I'm like you need a little bit of a build up, you know, like I know like Nintendo's more established and yeah, they could probably get away with it, but it would have a very weak launch because yeah. then everyone would be like, what the fuck? You know, like, I don't know. I just, I don't think it would go over well. No, it probably wouldn't. It's just one of those things I was thinking. I'm like, they could yeah. probably do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll release around this time next year. That's yeah, my likely. guess. Yeah, and then they'll and then they'll announce it anytime between tomorrow and March. 
March 31st. For, from October 30th to March 31st of 25, they will announce it in that time period. I'm saying it now, which is, you know, not insider information. <laughs> All right, so I think we've waffled on enough. I'm saying that now because it pisses Alex off. Um, <laughs> um, what does insert insert one of her burps in here right now? Thank you. I don't have any. I'm don't do that. Time. Damn it! <laughs> I don't have any water bottles either. Sorry. I I uh, use my I use my reusable one. Same. Hmm. Uh, so for this episode, we are celebrating spooky season. Uh, because Halloween at the time of recording is, well, at the time this releases will be the following day. So spooky. We thought it'd be fun this year to cover another Halloween-esque game, but instead of playing a dated horror game, we decided to play a licensed game. A dated off- licensed game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when you said it was feeling like the 90s? Yeah. yeah. Well, it based, is. Based off a of friendly, friendly ghost. Um, if you're wondering why I have the PlayStation version, I'm not paying $400 for the 3DO wow. version. And it's um, the same game. Yeah. Um, so a fun fact that Retro World this year, I actually saw a completed boxed copy of Casper and they wanted 300 for it. And I was like, nope. Like, I'm not that curious. <laughs> is, is that like the upper echelon of 3DO games or is that like nope. medium? That's like moderate, right? That's... Uh, it, it, it's... It's one of the higher ones, but okay. it's not like the the tippity top. Yeah, 3DO is weird. Like, there's some games that are like there's a ton of games that are cheap and like like around like forty to fifty, like in that range. Complete. Then you get these weird ones that are like in the eighty to ninety range. Then then there's just a selection of like the hundred dollar range, and then there's like the big dogs like uh, Lucian's Quest and uh, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, like just the the known games. Yeah, yeah. Looking at price charting, it's it, it's in like the top 20, 25 most expensive. Wow. But like there, there's a couple games like Captain Quasar is much more expensive. Um, that game is like shot up recently because mm. I, 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 I guess I got in when it was like kind of cheap, but it's like skyrocketed again. Who knows why? But it's weird. I've noticed like Casper stuff in general has gotten like expensive lately. I have no idea why. I don't know. Like, so fun, fun fact about how, why I have this PlayStation version. Um, me and Alex were out and Alex had to stop at like the grocery store. Um, and the grocery store we went to, there's like a retro game store, like right next to it. So I was like, do you mind if we just go in there real quick? Cause I like to browse. And I just walked by and it was sitting on the shelf just <laughs> right there. And I'm like, Hey, calling, it's calling game. to you. It's the Casper game. How much? Nine bucks. I'm like, okay, I might as well. <laughs> Yeah, on so. PlayStation, yeah, complete in box is eight dollars ninety six cents. Yeah, you've it's lost worth, four man, cents. Maybe. How dare you? And it 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 must have sold pretty well because I mean it's the greatest hits. That lovely green spine there. Yeah, can't see why. I mean, there's a lot of PlayStation games that sold really well yeah. for for no reason. Um, but yeah, well, it, it could have been that like you know that movie did really well. Because it's because it it's, it, yeah. it's yeah it's based on the Casper and the Friendly Ghost movie from 1995 I believe it's um, a, based on that movie yeah, yeah I'm based. the Casper expert I'll let you know it's not based off the movie pretty much at all but okay. it came out around the same time <laughs> yeah it did I, I wonder somebody should check but I think it was maybe one of those ones where they just had the assets from the movie but they had no idea what it was about except for like one thing. Because that's pretty much what the game is like compared to the movie. It, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie, so I, I don't remember. All I remember is I think uh, Eric Idle's in it. He is. He's a main character. Well, he's a pretty main character. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just so weird to see Eric Idle in something like this, but you know. Yeah. Whatever. I uh, always to qu- remember to, to quote him. There were some nice people around. Yeah. See, I always remember this movie like because the trailer for it was at the beginning of the the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Um, So I just vividly remember always seeing it whenever I would uh, watch that VHS tape. And I remember seeing it and being like, kind of like wowed by like the CG at the time. Yeah. I think um, I had looked it up. I think it's supposedly Casper is like the first CGI main character or something or something along those lines of a movie. 
it, it was definitely that era where CG had been around for a few years, but it was like finally kind of starting to come into its own. I mean, we had like, say, Terminator 2, which handled it really well. Jurassic Park, which handled it fantastic as well. Um, and this one is, yeah, trying to do it in a, in a bit of a, a different way. And, and so from some of the stills I've seen, it, it decently holds up like the the effects hold up better than you'd think. The yeah, translucent like effects still look really good today. Yeah, yeah, that's always really impressive. Yeah. So so for um people that w- are wondering, this game is actually one of many ports um for a multiple of different systems. The version we're playing is it's the same game as the PlayStation and Saturn versions. There was also a Game Boy SNES, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance version. They're all completely different games. Uh, and there was two There was two Windows ports, which I think are also slightly different, because this is back when PC games were just different from console games. Somehow, no Sega Genesis version. Um, it was 96, 97. I think Sega had, was all Saturn at that point. Yeah, they already killed it at that point, dumbasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so going into the developer for this version in particular, so the game itself was mostly developed by a studio called Funcom, um, who are still around to this day, actually. Um, and then they they made like the, the main game, and then they kind of farmed it out to a bunch of different like sub studios who uh, basically did all of the porting. Uh, the porting job for the 3DO version was actually Logicware, a uh, studio that we had previously mentioned during the... Uh, the Doom 3DO story time, they were the, actually the studio that basically did all the work. So, uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> was it the same lady who did all that work? I don't know if Rebecca worked on this. I can't find her name in the credits anywhere, so it, it might oh, have been man. some of the other people. Um, she was a yeah. little busy at the time. Yeah, she was She was trying to fix that dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> um, other than that, though, looking at Funcom's history, they've they're still around. They've done a lot of um, done a lot of stuff. Um, like what? Conan so made... Exiles. Yes, I've seen, Ooh, I've, okay. I've seen. I've seen this game. Yeah, that was never a game. played it though. Yeah, that was a game. They made this one game that I used to see everywhere: uh, Dragon Heart, Fire and Steel. Um, Dragon Heart, Fire and Steel. I don't recall. I've probably seen it before, but yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. You'll notice the acclaim logo, and that's all you need to know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did that uh, Pocahontas game for Genesis. That's that's an interesting game. They did um, a game called The Park. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, <laughs> We're going the to image, the park. <laughs> where you the go image, for a walk. The image is like this demonic squirrel looking creature with like a rainbow on its <laughs> stomach. Um, <laughs> that is so silly. I don't know what this game is. It's from a, it's a series. What the hell? Oh, my. Oh, yeah. And they made also a bunch of Conan games. They made, oh, they made the Dune Spice Girls crossover, Dune Spice Wars. I'm just making that up, but I wish it was a thing. Isn't it, wasn't that a new game that just came out or no? Uh, it came out. When did this come out? Oh, the Spice oh, Wars? Yeah, that came out did. last that year. That was a yeah. very recent game. Yeah. 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 Because because of the Dune cool. movies. So Dune's yeah. kind of in vogue again. And apparently they're working on some game called Dune Awakening. Some Apparently they just do a lot of like, MMO stuff these days. Hmm. Like yeah. that's, what, that's what they tend to do. So shit that I do not care about at all. Same. Looking at a lot of their game rankings, most of their games are either mixed to negative in reception. So <laughs> surprised they've hung around. They must they 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 must be like a lot of those licensed game studios where they're they're really good at pumping shit out really fast. Well, they also do a lot of publishing as well, not just developing. True. So that yeah, because they they published a Metal Hell Singer, which people oh. seem to really like. So yeah, <laughs> so that that's a deep dive for you. Yeah, um, um, who asked people, for that? Yeah, people finally needed that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, the game was published by the wonderful guys over at Interplay. That I'm still surprised. How are they still around? Because <laughs> they've gone bankrupt how many times now? Yeah, Interplay is is very strange. Very, very, very strange company. I love Interplay because they're they're the company that sold off the rights to Fallout, and then we're like, no, we're still going to make Fallout games. And, and Bethesda was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did they make that like Brotherhood of Steel crap? Was that that them? was bef- 
That was before they sold it off. I think oh, that was like one of the, the final games they made. Gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Yeah, the, look the at last... there's look at that, their stuff. There's like a gap between like 2015 when they published some like chess game, and then I guess this year they're publishing a game called Kingpin Life of Crime. Or did it already come out? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, it, it's it's a it, oh it, 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 apparently December fifth, twenty twenty three, Kingpin Life of Crime, some first person shooter that came out in the late nineties. And then I guess they did like a remaster of it or something. Who asked for that? Uh, somebody, apparently. <laughs> One person. Yes. Someone at the team was like, look what I made. And they were like, oh, I might as well release it. <laughs> yeah, they like they were doing a, a like some stuff in the 2010s and they just kind of fell off completely. The last thing I heard from them was they actually brought back Black Isle Studio with like none of the people who actually made Black Isle Studio, Black Isle Studio. Uh, they announced some game and then nothing ever came of it. And I think they closed the studio down like a month later. They probably realized, oh, we can't we can't do that. <laughs> they realized. Oh, all oh yeah. Oh, they were supposedly working on um, Earthworm Jim 4. Well, for everyone's favorite console, the Intellivision Amico. It was going to be exclusive to it. <laughs> Oh boy, and, and they and they were being very um, cagey about if uh, 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 Mister Mister Tenapol was going to be a part of it or not. Like they didn't want to confirm or deny that he was not there. But then when they were doing like promotion for the Amico and they would talk about stuff with Earthworm Jim Four, they were like, "Oh, you can get this like print with like the original dev teams like signatures," and his signatures right there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, so he is working on this game. Oh, okay. And, well, and he, from, well, like, he really needed money, so they got him to sign a bunch of shit. I mean, yeah. he was apparently a part of the team, but you know, yeah, mm. yeah, he def yeah, he definitely needs money to to spew his bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm going to not go in there. No. <laughs> so, what would you guys say is the best way to describe this game? Because it is certainly a game. It's Metroidvania. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> That's pretty much what I was thinking as I was playing. Yeah. I when I played it, I'm like, oh, it's an action, it's like an adventure action game with puzzle elements. To 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 quote to quote uh, our patron saint, angry video game nerd, it's a where the fuck do I go kind of game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at one point I was playing it, I, I said to myself, this is just like adventure for the Atari 2600 with fancier graphics. Like it's the same thing. You you get plopped in this like kind of maze. And you just sort of have to find your way around with like no map system or anything. Yeah. And then you just like pick up stuff and you're like, oh, this I think helps. And then you're finding like, what is this jigsaw thing? I get it. Like, like talk about a game that tells you absolutely nothing. Yeah. About what to do. My guess is it's in the manual. Um, no, I don't but, think like, so. Hey, I can find out. <laughs> yeah, please. I did find a, uh, a scan of the 3DO manual and it is a very nice scan. Um, but but I, I didn't read through it, but like uh, like like you you're wandering around and then you go up to like one room and they're like, oh, that's where like cat is. But I oh, can't gosh. go in there. I'll I scare can them. A, I can win a free game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that's how you get metaphor. <laughs> I feel like Casper is a, it's a point and click adventure with no story. And you take all the puzzle elements and you make them really boring and not good. And that's Casper. And you add a couple oh. abilities in there. We got controls. Oh, Ooh. so very important. Um, yeah. So fun fact: I didn't know you could like raise your height. Like, yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Ooh, it took that's me a the while. First to... thing I figured out. I found that out on my own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I... let me push every button. Let's see yeah. what every button does. So I roamed around. I was like, how the fuck do I get up on top of tables and shit? And then I fucking like pressed a button. He he raised, and I was like, oh, that would have been nice to be explained. Yeah, it, uh, it, it it is such a weird game because it's trying to do the thing where it's like it teaches you as you go, where it's like, you know, all these like keys open doors and then there's like the button, much like a point and click. There's like a button where you can just like have everything be described to you. Yeah. Right. Um, but it. I don't know. I, I it's 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 a we, it's a weird game because like I didn't hate it. I, re I really didn't. I didn't think it was terrible. No, I've played. But, we've played much worse on this yeah. show. Uh, yes, yes, like far, far worse than this. But it, it was a game that, like, I I put a couple hours into and and got decently far. But it, it's it's a game that, like, am I gonna sit down and and beat this whole thing? Probably probably not. 
you know, unless unless I really want to make myself feel weird about it. I don't know. I but think the best way to sum my thoughts up on this game are by this picture of Casper right here. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting his hands out like what? Shrug emoji. Yeah. Like, this is a very oh, shrug emoji kind of a game. Yeah. The whole time I was playing it, I was just like, I'm like, it's not bad, but I'm so bored. Like, yeah, it's so a boring, boring game. So lost. And it's just like you you check every door like five everything looks times. the same pretty much there's so many rooms so it many needs keys. a map it, it needs yeah. a map so fucking metroidvania bad. without a map because like the original metroid like when <laughs> yeah. you like when you go into like the inventory and like pick any kind of item that gives you like a random blue square and i'm like why do i have this blue square and then you and then you leave and it's like 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 is the blue square for like a puzzle later or something? Like I don't know why that shows up. Um, like you have to constantly be swap once you get like your abilities because Casper gains abilities over time. Like the first one is oh you can disappear as smoke and then go through the vents, which is like what he's a ghost. He should be able to do that anyways. Yeah, he does um, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, and 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 like there'll be certain doors that are like just like like the prison style bars, and I'm like he's a ghost. He could just go right yeah. through that. Yeah. Why do I need a key or to push like a random sequence of buttons or, or or move the spears of knights in a specific way? It's, it doesn't make any sense, man. Don't this forget game... the oh, don't forget the second one where it's just a giant square that's a little bit too tall for him. And even though there's a button that you can fly up, you have to turn into a ball and then bounce into the and and and, and, and using the ball takes away your life. Like yes. why? Why uh, does it take hit points every time? Comic Zone. <laughs> back again yeah don't don't insult comic sound like that <laughs> that game I is mean, at least entertaining that's the worst aspect of comic sound. yeah stuff. for sure for sure but yeah this game is just i feel like i don't know i feel like it could have been a better game like it doesn't really have combat but that's honestly not a bad thing yeah i don't like, really know how you do combat in this the controls like casper is so slippery yeah you yeah know? That it, like, it, it sometimes it's hard to fit them perfectly indoors or where you need them to go. And it could have just been like me emulating it, but I found the game was chugging quite a bit. No, it's like slow. it like it does not sit at a it's it's shooting for 60, but it hovers somewhere in the 40 range. And then especially in certain parts where it has to load, sometimes it's like like a snap of a finger, and other times it takes super fucking long. And I don't know, it's just something about the way it reads the memory that's like inconsistent almost. I will say I did notice like Casper's like unfriendly uncles would be around in the levels. They were like the closest thing to a threat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're only in like their specific like rooms, just like mucking about basically. And they're just so easy. Just to be like, yeah, get around them. If you, yeah. even if you need to like, there's, I forget which one, I think it's the one that like burps at you or something like his room is a dead end. So there's like no reason to go back into that room. Like it would have been interesting if they were like, say chasing you the whole time, or if they were just popping up randomly. And you sort of had to avoid them or use like your abilities to get past them, but that would have been interesting. <laughs> like I, I know, like that, like there's opportunities for this game to be more interesting, but I don't I know. Maybe I it, didn't play it enough of it for it to get that point, but yeah, I, I you, highly doubt it really does. You, you do need to eventually defeat them all to get parts of this Lazarus machine, which is like the final area. Um but I want to say one thing that's interesting. First of all, let's talk about the names of the uncles for a second as the Casper expert, okay? So there's Fatso, the <laughs> fat one. There's Stinky, the one that smells and breathes green, like, breath at you. And then Burps, Stretch, yeah. who's the tall one. And basically, the way you defeat them in the game is Fatso, you put down cheeseburgers. <laughs> and then Stretch, <laughs> you put super glue on the floor so he gets stuck. Cause I guess like stretch, he can't like stretch and get you or something. But he's a ghost. <laughs> and then stinky is literally you get like perfume or something and you spray it at him until he dies. I thought, I thought you were about oh, to say no. like you, but like like you no. you lure him into the shower. You get axe body spray. No, but there's a second part too where you oh, no. you have to you you catch Fatso in the bathtub and you take a picture of him, and that destroys him. Was this fatal frame? Yeah. See, I was so. thinking like when you said perfume, the first thing that popped in my head was like the SpongeBob, like there's the exit right through the perfume <laughs> department. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a uh, random like reference to that episode. That, that is feel, a terrifying moment in the show. I feel yeah. like the game is like if they just had like 
modern quality of life things. It would actually be like an, a pretty decent game. I feel like um, you could streamline it a lot more, you know, add add some tutorial elements or at least give you an idea of like where to go at certain points and could be okay. It does yeah. look okay. Like it's not an ugly looking game by any means. It, it, it feels like, oh yeah, I, I like how the game looks graphically, but it, it yeah. feels like a game that they, like they watched the movie and they were like, oh, we need to make a game based around this movie because it's popular. And they're like, what do we do? Yeah. And then they probably, and they probably sat around in like a conference room for like an hour trying to figure out like something. And then this was kind of the best they could come up with. Like also, it, it's not, it's not like a radical, like crazy thing. It's not like, you know, Casper's like pulling out a machine gun and shooting everybody, which yeah. actually probably would have been a better game. But you know, they're, they were trying to, I think, keep it with the source material, but either ish, either, ish but either <laughs> nobody realized or they just didn't want to admit it that like the Casper IP doesn't really lend itself to video games. Yeah, because um, it's actually really funny. I, the tagline on the the game is uh, a haunting 3D uh, challenge, and I'm like, Ooh. it's barely 3D. I'm like, one of those the things challenge. is definitely wrong. Uh, it's now, about as 3D as a as a Zelda game. I'm like, out of those three statements, only one of them is right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this game ain't haunting, and it's definitely not 3D. <laughs> nope. Um, other than that, though, like this game really the thing that I was thinking of that it kind of reminded me of is like someone's first like indie like an action adventure game where it's like they make a, a decent sized level and they make a, a functioning game, but they don't have enough creativity at the time to really do anything with it. So you kind of just walk around and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell the like the developers of this game were not really like talented enough to make it work. They, I, I'm convinced they must have gotten like the plot synopsis like dirt because it must have been made in tandem with the movie. Yeah, because the movie came out yeah '95, and then the game didn't come out till as far as we could tell like '96. So yeah. they probably yeah, so they probably got like you know some ahead like some ahead of the the time like yeah the script or. Like, you know, maybe so maybe they got like an early print of the film and saw it and we're like, oh, we need to make a game around this. Yeah. Um, how do we do this? It's also like there are very there are only a few distinct areas. There's like the mansion, which is like the main place that Casper is in the movie. So that makes sense. And they just added in all the weird like elements um, of like an old creepy mansion. And then there's like this one area where you go outside and there's like a like a hedge maze, which is totally like not a thing in the movie nope. and then then you go into like the basement of the mansion which is also like a thing but what's i think is something they should have added which i didn't remember this until i just watched it the other day there's actually kind of like steampunky vibes in like part of this movie as well which i think would have been really cool to maybe for gameplay elements you know i don't know maybe not a gun but you can use some <laughs> steampunk I don't know, electricity or something to like add another gameplay element. But of course, uh, they probably didn't know that about the movie anyway. So. Like, like maybe you give Casper some like different abilities that allows him to like interact with the world almost in right. say like a home alone style where you can like set up traps for the yeah, ghosts cool. or, you know, like maybe create some more environmental puzzles. Cause this game definitely needs more like environmental like puzzles yeah. or something. Cause yeah, it's just, it's like, like a fetch yeah, quest. Never yeah, quest. yeah, and the only challenge is like trying to remember everything you've checked, and yeah. it's it's so difficult. I I never looked up a walkthrough, but there were times where I got close. So I'm like, I feel like I've checked everything, and then it's like, oh, there's like the one random thing I didn't check, and that and then and then it works, you know, like and the game doesn't do a good job of like keeping track of your progress and like telling you where you need to go. Occasionally, you find little arrows, you know, being like, oh, you can go in here now, but like. It, it's not really enough. No, they they need like a map, <laughs> a map, and say like you are fifty percent complete with this area or something like that. That would be very helpful in the game. I yes, one thousand percent, or at least like an objective marker, like telling you what you're supposed to be doing. Because like literally, like this game does not tell you anything. <laughs> it's literally like this game is like the literal definition of throwing the kid into the deep end of the pool and just yeah. be like, good luck. It's there is a similarity that I had to Dark Souls. Now, hear me out. If 
very early in the game, you can walk into the room with Fatso, the uncle, and he just kills you because I thought I could kill him back or something, and he just he just killed me. I love you're comparing Fatso to the tutorial boss in Dark Souls 1. Exactly, because you can access him <laughs> earlier and he kicks your ass. It's like playing Chrono Trigger and fighting Lavos the first chance you get. It doesn't always go so well. You can. I don't you shouldn't. It, but you, can. you shouldn't, but you can. Yeah, unless you're a freak. Or you're playing Persona 4 and you you get the Reaper on your first dungeon and you go, sure, let's try this, see how it goes. Not a good idea. Uh, so, like we usually do, it's always fun to look at the reception for these games. Mm. Um, the only problem is um, there's not a lot of info on the 3DO version, so I'm going <laughs> to just kind of go on. The, the one 3DO review I saw was EGM. Uh, they gave it a 6.75 out of 10, which actually, that's not as bad as I was expecting. Um, Sounds reasonable. Next Generation uh, lumped all three of them together and basically gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. So pretty average. Uh, game Rankings gives the PS1 version a 49, so that's not great. Um, and most reviews kind of hover around the 2-star rating. Like, all game gave the PS1 and Saturn both a 2-star rating. Um. Yeah. So it's very the highest rating I see here is the Saturn Sega Saturn magazine gave the Saturn version a seventy. I would give it two tuna fish sandwiches out of five because for some reason you're always collecting tuna fish sandwiches. Yeah. What no the hell reason. was up with all the tuna fish sandwiches, man? No is idea. It doesn't appear in the movie at all. So I have no <laughs> okay. idea. Yeah. Like, do ghosts like tuna fish sandwiches? I don't know. So. I love the tagline that the Sega Saturn magazine gave in their review. They described it as a decent effort. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like I like that you can save pretty much whenever you want. That's a nice touch. Mm. Um, unless you're playing the PlayStation version, you don't have a memory card, in which case. Oops. <laughs> oh, fun piece of trivia. I did learn, though, while I was uh, doing research on this. This is one of the rare 3DO games that is region locked. Interesting. Um, if you buy yeah. the year, if you try to play this game on a PAL um, or a uh, Japanese 3DO, it will not work. Why? They really wanted to protect cats <laughs> for, from yeah. foreigners or something. I don't know. I don't we know. Can't let, protect them at all costs. We can't let those grubby Japanese get a hold of our friendly ghosts. Yeah. I was thinking too. We were thinking about why this game is so expensive. I was thinking about it actually for a minute. 96, 97 ish. That was 3D was basically dead. So this was probably very late and like probably not a lot were made. Yeah, it probably didn't have have a super high print run. But if I remember correctly, there's like a GBA version of this, and that's like expensive for some reason. Like not terrible, but like you'd look at it and go, huh. Like, why is it that much money? But you know what's yeah, kind of who, funny? Who knows? Who knows why? Under under reception, they only the only non PlayStation like Saturn 3D review is for the GB uh, Game Boy Color version, which has three stars. Nothing else is is even listed. Apparently, the Super Nintendo version is very expensive. I've yeah. heard it's bad too. <laughs> like not. Good. Yeah, I feel like the only reason it is kind of expensive is because uh, the people who published it are interesting. Oh, Natsumi. Natsumi, yes. You can connect mm -hmm. Casper to Harvest Moon. Oh, Natsu if you ever want a deep dive into the new game. If you if you ever want a like <laughs> a deep dive into like bizarrity, look up the history of Natsumi. It is a fucking deep rabbit hole. It's fascinating. Sounds like a good podcast episode, Bill. You should you think Alex would be into that because she loves freaking farming games. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Do it by Doesn't yourself. like Harvest Moon. She seems um, like she would love Harvest Moon, but she well, likes like the old ones, not the new ones. Yeah. Well, she actually, um, Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town is actually a really good game. That's um, what I hear. Uh, she's played that one. She likes that one. Um, she'd probably like the older ones. The thing is, though, she'd rather just play Stardew Valley. That's fair. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, so now for the fun part of the show where we do our our uh, routine must play okay stay away i'm 
it's okay. <laughs> like there's really, <laughs> it's really not, as Casper said. <laughs> I'm gonna say hard okay. <laughs> Just... Yeah, that, I I feel like stay away is too harsh because it's like it's not a terrible game by any means. Like it, it but there's nothing really there. You know, what we've I mean? given it's, worse. We've given worse games better ratings. So yeah, yeah. It, it it is kind of like the one thing a game shouldn't be, and that's boring. But yeah, like yeah. it it runs. It's not like completely terrible. And I think if I had like stuck with it long enough, I probably would have beat it and just been like, well, that was a video game. You know, it, it's it's probably the most like five out of ten game I think I've ever played in my life, and it has a memory manager. <laughs> So for FC one players, yeah, because when you yeah when you load it up there, yeah, just pay four hundred dollars for it. If you go to um, <laughs> like the main menu, there is a thing that just says storage, and you can actually like look at all your storage, which is nice. Um, yeah. I didn't realize how many games I've uh, I've played on the Fortio like take up so much save space, but what can you do? So nice. I th I think I would actually say stay away, just because uh, I could not play it for very long without being frustrated. So I watched somebody play through the whole game. That's why I know guys. And um, <laughs> I will you say like, expert. yeah, exactly. Didn't replicate the movie at all. So I'll say stay away. I, I can't really see somebody actually playing this and being like, oh, that was fun. It seems <laughs> yeah. like a little bit of a waste of time. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, unless sure, you're like worse a, games, but. Yeah, unless you're like a six year old and this was like the only game you had. Exactly. Like, that old amazing. style. You got to rent one game like yeah, a month the, or something, and it was Casper. You'd, you'd have fun with it for sure. But. Exactly, exactly. There's not that many uh, Casper games. There's like a handful of them. There's a Casper Spirit Dimensions on the PS2 and GameCube, which I remember seeing, but I've never played it. Uh, there's there's some like PAL-only game called Casper and the Ghostly Trio, which honestly looks like dog shit. Um, <laughs> and then Casper Scare School for the PS2 and the DS. And okay. for some reason, the DS version came over here, but not the PS2 version. We were not yeah. so fortunate. Track that DS game down. That seems awesome. <laughs> and it doesn't look too good. <laughs> doesn't matter. So I will say, if the 3DO version was the only version of this game, and stay that away. was the only way you could play it, I'd say stay away. But you can get this game for like, up like nothing on PlayStation if you really want to experience it. So that's why I say okay. I, I would um, say though, do do you guys if you if you were to recommend it to somebody, how long honestly do you think they would play before they got frustrated and stopped playing it? A minute. An hour. Yeah. Because yeah. I seriously played for like 10 minutes and I was like, this is insane. Like this is not for me. <laughs> See, I so, made the uh, poor decision. I, 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 I put like two and a half hours into it. Did you force yourself to though? Or did you yeah. want to do? Yeah, because I, I was like, hey, let me make some actual progress because I can do this. Sure. Like, let me just so, see what I can do. So fun fact, my playtime on my file, if it even records that, is probably really high. And that's because the first time I played this, I made the poor decision of playing it late at night. And I fell asleep <laughs> while I was playing. <laughs> I woke up. It all up. I woke up and the game was still running, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, <laughs> that poor so, PlayStation. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, Sony made those things like tanks. Yeah, I'd you say you're better have, off. You might have to play it upside down, though. Yeah, I'd say you're better off watching the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The movie is surprisingly holds up pretty well and is decent. Yeah, for licensed game standards, this is like in that weird realm where it's like it's not bad, but it's yeah. not like it's not like good like in a SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom or no hit and run kind of way where you actually no. remember it. No, is, yeah, yeah, not even fucking close, dude. This is this isn't even like bad entertaining like some of those really bad ones that are like so crap that you kind of find them enter entertaining. Th this one just kind of is like it, it's there. Exists. Like like yeah. if they made some like weird two D platformer for for Casper, that would be fine. Yeah, it, it it probably would have been perfectly fine and would have been better. Like it would have been a better game. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, maybe or an RPG, Casper RPG. Let's go. <laughs> oh God, tuna fish sandwich attack or something. I don't know. 
that is such a random thing that I didn't even think about. No idea. There's so much stuff like that in there. All of his transformations that he gets doesn't make any sense, man. There's one he like turns into a propeller. It's, yeah. A screwdriver. Yeah, dude. Yeah. He's a ghost. He must be able to change into things. Let's make He's it a Mr. Game. Fantastic now or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but but he can't just do it. He has to like earn it. Yeah. By, like, yeah. By like finding all the pieces, four pieces of a, of a puzzle, of, of a puzzle that's like a weird portrait of his uncles that he hates, but like yeah. it was them in their like past lives or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. And then like, then like yeah, the two people show up, and he's like, oh, I don't want to scare them, so let me like you know pick a rose in the in the bush and find a random <laughs> book for the doctor because he's a doctor, so he likes books, of course, right? Um, it it and that then that cut scene. When you actually go in there, it's like I'm like, oh, oh no, oh, no. yeah, <laughs> it's it's no Luigi's Mansion. No, definitely uh, not. No, that's a fun game. <laughs> Amazing game. Yeah, it's weird that people hated it when it came out because they're no it. fucking fun. Okay, people were hating on the GameCube back then way too hard. Well, the, you had the people that bought the GameCube, and they were like. There's no Mario, so we don't like this. And then Mario's game kind of came out, and they were like, "We don't like it because it's not like Mario 64." And it's like, "What do you guys want?" Yeah, yeah people. Yeah, people hate it on those. They hate it on Wind Waker. They hate it on Metro Prime, Pokemon Coliseum. Like, Pokemon Coliseum, like all all the stuff they were trying to do that was different. And people were hating on them for it. Star, you know? Star even, even Pikmin. Yeah, Star Fox, Pikmin. You know, they're like, "Oh, we don't want any of this shit." And now. 20 years later, everyone's like, oh, they, I cool. want all that now. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Like, how many, other than like Smash Brothers Melee, like, how many games on the GameCube did people hate when they came out? Like, Nintendo people fans didn't hate, like, people didn't hate Double Dash, but I remember like Double okay. Dash, it was, it was a little different, but it wasn't like that different. Well, Double Dash started out popular. Then it went through this weird phase where everyone was like, it's the worst in the series. And then now everyone's like, we love Double Dash again. It's just like the wave of nostalgia too, dude. You have to think about that. Like the wave of nostalgia yeah. for GameCube is definitely still going right now. Oh, so yeah. all of a sudden, those games that you didn't like before. Because all us filthy content creators were kids when the GameCube was out. So we have fond yeah. memories for it. Or you were a PlayStation kid who didn't get to experience it. You're not bitter. Yeah, I mean, I got <laughs> most of my... <laughs> I'm bitter. I didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bitter because I, I was because I was smart and did my collecting when like GameStop was just throwing away the games. Yeah. See, yeah. I was too, but then like a dummy, I sold most of it. See, oh well. That's my 360 thing too, man. I collected so much 360 stuff for like three dollars. Yeah. My 360 red ringed back then, so and I'm having issues with my 360 now, which is which is great. You have the black one. I have yeah, I have the slim. For some reason, like it it turns on, but I just get a black screen. Yeah, I get a green I get a green light. It just stays there forever. It just never changes. And I don't know what the hell's going on. I was getting an error code, like it was having like a bad hard drive. So I was like, oh, let me unplug the hard drive and try to turn it on. And now it just won't turn on. That's it. That's an error of gaming that I miss. The old 360 like fix fix solutions, like wrap it in a towel, <laughs> wrap it in oh, a towel. God, yeah, dude. But this is the slim model. It should work better. Well, my favorite video ever was a review for the slim model, where this guy was like, "Ooh, let's see if the C it still destroys CDs when you flip it." He flips it up, and it just you just hear, Krr, and it's like, "Yep, still destroys CDs." I mean, I feel like most CD based machines do that. So the PS2 actually had a spacer so that you could theoretically flip it while it's running, but you're not supposed to do that. Period. Yeah, like why are people doing that in the first place? What's wrong with you? Well, I know with 360s, a lot of times people, they would have them sitting on like a, a counter or like a dresser mm -hmm. or something. It would Like they would bump it and then you'd hear yeah. the grinding noise. Yeah. Because yeah. the 360, there was no spacers whatsoever. So like a little jolt and that thing is moving. Yeah, I, I think I did that once, but it was to a rental game. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> and I never, t I never fessed up. To <laughs> oh well, I don't even remember what the game was. Probably something that's it. it probably like Bullet Witch or something, you know? Like I did not <laughs> rent Bullet Witch back then. Are you Darkest kidding me? Darkest of Days. I was just trying to think of what's about. I have Darkest of Days. I do too. I don't. <laughs> it's an amazing game. Uh, but um. Yeah, we got an hour out of Casper. That's somehow. That's it's 20 minutes with game that. news in the beginning, right? Front loaded. That, 
that's actually pretty good for us. We spent the, <laughs> the last game we covered, we spent like 40 minutes on game news and then like 20 minutes. There was on a the lot game. to talk about, man. There yeah, probably was. Yeah. I don't know. I think we talked about Dreamcast again for like 20 minutes. Yeah. We didn't even talk about Black Ops 6 coming out and actually doing well, but like who who the fuck cares? Who cares? Yeah. I can't wait for that for like Black Ops 48 where the, the logo is just a barcode. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to love that. I just want uh, all the other COD games on Game Pass so I can play all the campaigns. Okay. That's all I want. I'm just waiting for the rest of them. Yeah. Where's all the Activision games that people thought we were going to get on Game Pass? I feel like it's Xbox like really weirdly being gun shy about it because when they dropped all the Bethesda stuff at once, like it was a big deal, but it kind of like, you know, a week later, everyone's like, who cares? So they were like, oh, and maybe they're worried about like the FTC coming after them. So they're just doing little bits here and there. I honestly don't know. They're adopting the old Nintendo drip feed everything method. Yeah. 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 But I mean, hey, we got uh, the, the Crash Trilogy on there, which was great. So. I'm just waiting for the Spyro trilogy, so give me an excuse to 100 percent them all again. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that was a fun episode of um 3DO. Um, Dickerman, would you like to shout out your uh, YouTube channel? Um, if you if you watch the video version of this podcast, you can look at my name and just type it in on the good old YouTube's. Um, I always try to spell it out and misspell my own name, so you know what. And if you don't want to check it out, that's fine, too. I make videos about random stuff and haven't posted that much recently. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the, the best version to not sell myself. But if you like <laughs> Digimon, too, you should check it out. That, that actually I talk about sometimes. Nice. And I'll be sure to include a link to that in the description of this episode. But, um, Thank you, sir. yeah, and other, other than that, like, what game are we going to play next week is the question. No idea. I want to do Killing Time, but I feel like we should wait a little bit on that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should. I do have it. I did buy it, so. Um, we'll probably talk off screen and we'll figure something out. <laughs> Sounds good to me. But before we sign off, we got to do our ending shout outs. Once again, guys, thank you for joining us on the 3DO experience. The 3DO experience can be found on all the major podcasting platforms, particularly Apple Podcast and Spotify. And be sure to check us out over on the Superpod Network. That is superpodnetwork.com. It's an awesome site where you can find a whole bunch of different shows, videos, um, blogs. Uh, we just wrapped up. We did um, a whole month of uh, spooky blogs for uh, Spooktober, as Boss Man Aaron likes to call it. And... <laughs> um, you can also check out all the wonderful shows on the network, including Super Pod Saga, Super Ghost Radio, Retro Rehab, Tommy's Video Game Ride Along, a novel console. It's finally back, people. It <laughs> is. Bar Silence, Fine Time, The Elder Trolls Gaming Podcast, Remember 64, Gaming Together, Friday Night Gamecast, and of course, the three GNC shows, Gaming and Collecting, The 3DO Experience, Geek Addicts, and the retro wildlands and the newest member of the, of the network press B to cancel. Woo. And are you streaming this week track or, uh, potentially, uh, I'm planning to, unless something weird happens. So I know it's, it's, it's tentative. Uh, I'm planning to do instead of Genesis stuff, I'm going to do some, some horror games cause it would be Halloween night. So, nice. and I, and I have those games picked, but I, I, I kind of don't want to say them until, until I know for sure that it's happening. So, but uh, but they should be good. They're like modern, like kind of indie horror games. So one I've right. played before, and one I've never played before. So sweet. So uh, anyone who's interested, link it will be down in the description, or you can see down below in front of a uh, Snickerman there, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Twitch TV slash Thrack ninety four. So right there, baby. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, once again, dude, thank you for joining us for this episode. This was fun. <laughs> Love yeah, talking. Thanks about for having me. Love to talk about friendly ghosts. Yeah, we'll be sure to. We'll try to get you on again at some point for a non. This kind of game that was fun. I mean, I had fun with it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get you on for a real game at some point, though. I mean, this was a real game. Let's be honest. true. Uh, well, anyways, guys, once again, thank you for joining us, and we will see you all later. Bye bye. end here <laughs> um